All right, so let's now look at another example where we are doing a, an optimization problem here. And this problem is uh, specifically suitable for students who are, uh, you know, in, in business field. Okay, and so let's spend some time reading the, the wording description of this example over here. So a baseball team plays in a stadium that holds uh, 74,000 spectators. And with the tickets price at $8, $8, the average attendance has been uh, 30000 When the price dropped to $6, the average attendance rose to 37000 Now, attendance can be assumed to be linearly related to tickets price. So, what tickets price uh, would maximize uh, revenue? Okay, what tickets price would maximize revenue as a question? And then, so it really, we have two separate, que two different questions here. And after that question, after answering this question, what is the maximum revenue? And so, in this way, after I spent some time reading the wording, the description, and, and we, we are fully aware that our problem here is an optimization problem. And again, let's identify our objective. And so for our objective, for our objective here, the wording in the problem says, uh, OK, that we want to maximize, maximize revenue. Or in the next question, it says the maximum revenue. So that's, that's our objective. That's our goal, right? the ultimate goal. The revenue is what we want to get the, the most out of. And so in that way, in that way, we want to maximize. That's our objective. That's our goal. We maximize, uh, we want to make our revenue the most. Okay? Maximize revenue. That's our goal right there. But then now, that's just the, the final goal. But so in the end, from after we found, after we have identified our objective right here, we need to hunt for our objective function, which is now going to take a little while. And so the reason I introduced earlier that this example is suitable for the business students because uh, the business major students have, uh, have learned uh, at least some techniques how to derive uh, in, in your own field, in your own direction, in your own uh, path to become a, a, a business field uh, person, a, a person, a professional in business field, then right? you have learned some some of the, 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 the standard technique how to derive uh, these uh, functions right here. And so, let me now swing back to the computer screen right here, and we can find, uh, track down some further information. We can find out some other information. So, so now a baseball team plays in a stadium that holds uh, 74,000 spectators. Okay, this is another way of saying that you know we can guess, right? These are the guests that it can hold that many guests to come and, and, and watch the game. Okay. And so with the tickets price at $8, the average attendance has been uh, uh, 30000 So I have to clarify that this term attendance right here is just a different way of calling the, the number of tickets we can sell. The number of tickets we can sell will be 30000 when we when we are selling at the price of $8 per ticket. So really for, so now specifically when I'm communicating with the, uh, when I'm communicating with my uh, business math students, then the, the number of tickets we can sell is a quantity. So now, we are, to be clear, we are on our way to find out what our objective function is. So, so now, according to the information, I know the quantity. See, now we can just stay with our maybe more familiar the, the naming of the variable here. Q is for the number of tickets. And so we we would be selling at uh, thirty thousand tickets, okay? Because that's it's say attendance. So thirty thousand thick tickets can be will be sold, or can can be sold if we are selling at uh, eight dollars per ticket. Okay, so we have a pair of value. And then the next piece of information. Let me swing back to the computer screen here. The next piece of information say it says that when the price dropped to eight dollars, I mean six dollars, okay? Then the average attendance rose to 37,000. And so that means uh, 
we change quantity of the tickets that we can sell. So that means quantity can be changed to will be rose we will rise to thirty seven thousand. When we actually drop our ticket down to six dollars a ticket. Okay? And so in that way, now once as we progress further and look further into this statement right here is, is now quite familiar for a lot of uh, students who are in business major right here. Attendance can be assumed to be linearly related to tickets price. So for the business calculus students who are the viewing this video, then you must have gone through a course where, where we learned about uh, demand and supply. So this line right here that I'm highlighting, attendance can be assumed to be linearly related to tickets price. That means, uh, now back on my board, that means uh, we can have quantity can be a function of price. Slope times uh, price P plus B. That is what it means by being a linear relationship. Or we can write it the other way. And the, I'm, I'm talking about we have two different ways of writing our demand equation, our relationship between attendance and the price being sold, per, uh, the, the price we're selling for, for tickets. So the other way of writing that is price equals, price equals uh, some slope times uh, Q, the quantity, plus B. So two different ways. So And, and believe me, as I said again, that's anyone viewing this video who, who happens to be in business major, then you should be well familiar because either you have learned that from me in previous, in earlier course, or you have learned that from other instructors about any time you're looking at uh, the, this relationship right here. There are two ways, two different ways how we, read, how we are writing it. But now, in this problem in particular, let me express my own understanding and lead any, anyone viewing this video into uh, getting into the right targets right here. But we want to find at the end when we come up with our final revenue function. Because now, as a reminder, anyone arriving at this video lesson, lesson should also be familiar with how we go from a demand function and derive your own, uh, your own uh, revenue function. And so reven revenue can also be a function in terms of the price, or revenue can also be expressed as a function in terms of the quantity. Okay. And so it, it two different ways. It all depends on how we started out uh, looking at our uh, demand equation here. So now here is I'm, I'm pointing out how to choose right here. But uh, when we are looking at this ultimate question, we are asking what tickets price would maximize uh, what at find a tickets price that would maximize the revenue. So that means intentionally, this question already gave us a hint. The hint here is that a clue, a clue, a hint here is that we want to actually express our final objective function. I put a check mark here. We want to express our objective function as a function of, uh, of the price, of the price per tickets. And so, of course, we have our other choice to go the other way, but let's now ignore that. Okay? But that means if we set our goal here to identify, to come up with our final objective function as a function of price, then that means this is the better form to start out deriving our, our uh, demand equation. Okay? And so, so now, in that way, let's find out. So I just clearly made the uh, point out how we made our choice. To, we, we, we are going to go with this choice right here, expressing the, the demand equation as a attendant equals or the quantity equals some slope multiply, multiplying with the price and, and, and plus with some y-intercept because here we want prices to be the, the, the determining factor that, you know, that change the, the attendance and also change the revenue. Okay? So now I'm going to put that away or maybe I'm going to move to the other board of mine. So with the two pairs of value, and now we know that our goal here is to come up with the, the demand equation Q equals some slope times price plus the y-intercept. And so in that way, and we already found from the earlier board, from the other board right here. Let me quickly swing back on the other board. These two pairs of value, you know, 30,000 for Q, while P equals uh, 8, or 37,000 for Q, while P equals six right here. We got two pairs of value. Okay? So so now I'm gonna briefly put those on the other board together there. 
So we got one pair of value is eight for P and 30,000. Okay, for, for Q, because now Q is the sort of like a, the, the output and P is the input. So as a, an order pair, we put P first and then Q after. And then we have another pair of six comma 37,000. Okay, so we got two pairs of value. And so that means having two pairs of values now, we are going to, we can now find our slope. And our slope is going to be the change in the, the final outputs, which is, uh, so 37 minus 30,000. Okay, and we're dividing that by the change in price. Six is the final price minus eight, the initial price right here. So now we're looking at, uh, M equals, uh, all right, no, 7,000. Not 70, 7,000. Divided by minus two. And so our final M right here is minus 3,500. So that's our final slope value. That's our slope value. So the demand equation at this point is going to become Q equals minus 3,500. P plus with some y intercept. And so that is going to be our demand equation. Okay? And so now to find the, the value for B, anyone uh, learning at this point right here should be familiar. We can all we do is just simply take either one of the two pairs here and substitute that in P for P, Q for Q, and solve for, and then we're gonna solve for our unknown P, I mean unknown B value. So I would say this pair right here would be would look a little easier for me. So even though you also have your own choice, you go for the other pair. So 30,000 equals a minus 3,500 times eight okay, plus B, okay? And so now final B value, I'm gonna quickly step out and do a quick calculation here all right, so I found B, after my calculation, B equal 58,000. Okay, so now let's put it, all the pieces together. So back on my earlier board, now I can put away, I can erase away these extra information. But we're still, we're getting closer, but we're still on our way to find the, the, the objective function. That's one thing, to, just to be clear again. We're still just about the first step. All right, so, so now our demand function is as follows. Q equals uh, minus 3500P plus 58,000. So this is our demand function. That's our demand equation, okay? And then from here, business major students are well aware that revenue equals uh, quantity times uh, price. So Q times P right here. Okay, Q times pre P. And so we have now found that Q is this expression. And so here's the thing. Revenue as a function. So strictly as a function, this is our objective function right here, okay? F for this particular problem, it, 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 is, it's, it is not very clear about uh, where the constraint is and so someone viewing this video may even believe that there are there is no constraint, but this is how I see it. This is our constraint. This is our constraint. First of all, it points out, even though for business major students, uh, we, we strictly see this. We maybe any one of you, we heavily see this uh, as, a, as a demand equation, but this is how we can also creatively understand about the, the, the demand equation in a different context right here. See, this function, for this function, we are stuck with two variables, Q and P. And so now with this equation pointing out the relationship between the two variables, P and Q over right here, then we can take advantage of that and substitute the Q into our function here. And so now this equation now can be in, in a, you know, being used in the role of a a constraint here, because it points out, a constraint points out about how a relationship between the two variables or even more variables involved in your particular uh, objective function, okay? So in that way, 
in that way I'm, I'm go now going to take this. We already had our objective, but that's not a good one to handle for our level here. So we need to substitute uh, this expression for Q. So now our final, so now this is how we're going to substitute. Minus 3500 P plus 58,000. That's for quantity. Now being substituted by Q right there, but by an expression in terms of P. And we're going to multiply with P. And so now at this point, if look again, this revenue, and that is revenue, original meaning of revenue, but now this is a little developed version. And so now th this next form right here is al already completely in terms of the P variable, one variable only. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply or distribute through a little bit. Okay, so our final objective function now as a function that in terms of one variable is going to be minus 3500 P squared plus 58,000 P. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we have now found our objective uh, function. I put that in a box not because it's a, it's a, a, our final answer, but it's simply, it's a good uh, focus point for us, okay? So this is our objective function. All right, because once we have come to our objective function, then the next step should be quite standard, just like any other problem where we solve maximum and minimum problem. We're going to start taking derivative and all that and, and do derivative test. I mean, do the, the, the test, either first derivative test or second derivative test, whichever that's, that's uh, good for us in, in these uh, applied situation. All right, so now I'm going to Step over to my other board. And so now our work becomes a standard at this point. I'm going to take the derivative of our revenue function or, or prime of P. So in this case right here, revenue is a function of a price. So the pricing is, is, is the determining factor that decides uh, are we going to get the, the best revenue or are we going to get the, the, the worst revenue, okay? So minus 7,000 P plus 58,000. That's our first derivative as it came out from, again, this final objective function of ours right here, okay? And so in that way, now the next step, quite standard again. We are going to set our prime of P to equal zero. And that leads us to producing an, e an equation as following, minus 7,000 P plus 58,000 equals zero. So we have an equation to solve. Okay, and so from this equation, I am going to subtract 58,000. My space on the board is getting a little tight here, but uh, so subtracting 58,000 from both sides, we're looking at minus 7,000 P equal minus 58,000. Okay, and now I'm going to next step, divide in the next step, divide by negative, negative 7,000 on both sides. And so we come to P equal, all right. So the calculation here showed. 8.2857 and a lot longer. But so now, we're a business people. I mean, assumingly, viewers who are viewing this lesson are mostly business major. So this is the pricing. Money in our nation is two figures, two decimals. So. I have my reason here, needless to say, I'm going to round that down to two decimal places. So 8.229, so $8, so we have found 8.29. So by far, at this point, this is only a critical value. It's just a critical value. And we're close to answering our first part in the question right here, okay? Because the first part of the question is asking, all right, so there we go. Here it is again. What tickets, what tickets price would uh, maximize the, the, 
the revenue. So right there at that uh, piece of information right there, see what tickets uh, price uh, would maximize revenue. So in that way, right now we only found at this ticket's price, it's going to be something going on. It's going to be something a little, a little special. It could be a minimum, could be a maximum, it could be neither. And I mean maximum or minimum or neither for the our revenue function, okay? I mean not R prime, I'm just pointing out to the R right here. Okay, so we got a test. We got a test to decide are we going to have for our revenue a maximum revenue or minimum revenue or neither at this critical value. So again, I highlight this as the critical value. Okay, and so now I'm, I am going to erase the, the work that we've had here. And I, I only need to retain our R of P. That was minus 35 hundredths P squared plus 58,000 P. So that was our revenue function here. And so, continuing from the earlier step, I am, uh, for the, in this particular problem, I am going to stay with the second derivative test to decide uh, whether this critical value would give me a maximum or minimum. So, I need to remind again that, that after we've learned from the general lecture that we will always have the two different choices using either using the first derivative test or the second derivative test to decide whether a, give, a found critical value will give us a maximum or a minimum or neither. But uh, in here, in my experience, I see that uh, the, the, the function, the objective function itself is a, is a uh, simple quadratic and then we already had our prime and we should be able to easily find uh, our second derivative. So let's head that way and, and use uh, our second derivative test that will save us a lot of efforts by making uh, sign charts as uh, supposedly happened in in the first uh, with first derivative test, and so now I am going to find the second derivative, or double prime of p is going to be uh, simply minus seven thousand. Okay, and so now with the critical value that substituted in, so or double prime at eight point two nine is going to give me just again negative seven thousand, regardless of what value that is. Because see, now back to what I was saying earlier, in my experience, and now viewers can see it. Because look at how easy we found that second derivative now. And so once we found that second derivative, it remains a constant. And so it doesn't matter what uh, value we're substituting in, the final R double prime will be negative again. And so now clearly with that, with this uh, calculation and check, the signs are here, our, our double prime is negative. That now leads us to the following conclusion. Our revenue function, as a function of the pricing, has its, okay, has its maximum okay, at the price equals 8.29, okay? It, so we came to a determination right here. We, decided that the revenue has to hit its maximum when it comes to uh, pricing at uh, selling at uh, eight dollars and twenty nine cents right here for per tickets right here okay and so I need to remind anyone viewing this video that if you feel a little unsure about how this step leads to this conclusion then you need I highly recommend that either uh, you view my earlier earlier video lecture about uh, the second the second derivative test or find that uh, second derivative test, learn that second derivative test from other instructors. There are videos all over the web in these days uh, about that. But so here all I, can, all I can, can do here in this particular lesson is to apply the second derivative test and lead to our conclusion. But so now let's look at how important that conclusion is. So the question itself is asking what tickets price, you know, P equals what? What tickets price would maximize revenue? Didn't we just found that answer? So now back to the work that I have on the board right here. You see, this final conclusion is important now. 
the, the revenue ha has its maximum or reach its ma reach, reaches its maximum at this price. So this is our answer. This is our answer for the first part of the question. For the first part of the question. That first part of the question here. So now we, we answer the first part of the question at P equals the 8.29. That would maximize uh, the revenue, our revenue function. All right. And so now it's now time to move on. And so now uh, we can move on to the next part of the question right here. So what is the maximum revenue? What is the maximum revenue? So, so in, in this particular problem here, we want to step a little forward. But what is the maximum revenue? This conclusion we have found so far at all is only stating that we will hit a maximum revenue when, it, when we are selling at this price. But, but so how big will that revenue be? That's what the next question is asking. So the work here is simple. We are going to find R, the, the, the original function right here. Revenue, we're going to substitute 8.29 into our revenue function. OK, so, so that's a little uh, short of space here. So I'm going to write out, down as a plan right here. R at 8.29 is going to be our maximum revenue. And that is what we're looking for. So now let me move out to the, the other board and let's do a, a f our final calculation. All right, so R at uh, 8.29 will equal so now minus 3,500 times in parentheses 8.29 R square and plus and now 58,000 times uh, 8.29. And so I need to remind anybody, we are substituting the critical value that we have found. We're substituting the answer we have found earlier into our original revenue function, our original objective function. And that's the whole idea about the problem right here. That's, that's how we find. And this final calculation right here will be our maximum revenue. OK? So I'm going to quickly step away for a calculation. All right, so my final calculation gave me, so I, I'm going to also write that as a final conclusion as well. Maximum revenue. Maximum, maximum revenue. Okay, we found that to be R at uh, 8.29, and that equals, uh, so my calculation gave 240,000. 285 and 65 cents. This is in final dollar amount. And that's our maximum revenue right there. Okay?